Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online video with me, Sherman. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between DLCs and chapters. I know a lot of people think that chapters are pretty much like larger DLCs, and they're correct, they are. But at the same time, DLCs do come with a little bit more. And uh, there's a reason why I'm here in Arsenium, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but let's go ahead and start what, like with the basics. So most DLCs are smaller zones they're like the Th the thieves guild the dark brotherhood uh clockwork city those are those are dlcs and then we have dungeon dlcs which are you know just dungeons and if you haven't noticed the prices pricing of dlcs have are pretty much set now we have like the 1500 for the um dungeon dlcs we have 2000 for the chapter like the not the chapter dlcs but the the little bit bigger dlcs like the dark brotherhood and things like that but Orsinium actually is the most expensive DLC you can buy. And there's a reason for that. Orsinium comes with a lot more content than any of the other con Like, if this was an actual DLC, it would actually only encompass a smaller region of land. But this encompasses a large section of land. And I think that the devs intended this to be a test run to see if people liked the idea of a big zone release. And that's why it's more expensive out of all the other DLCs. Now we know that there's Imperial City which came with two dungeons and a, and a thing. That was something that they planned on releasing a long time ago but never got around to it kind of. They wanted to get that idea of how they wanted to do Orsinium, or not Orsinium, uh, the Imperial City right when they released it. And I think they did a really good job with, with Imperial City. But Orsinium was the best DLC released um, to date and that's because it's massive it's huge then we get told they're releasing chapters now if you t take in comparison and somebody's done this in comparison of size of landmass versus Vardenfell Orsinium actually takes up about this much of Vardenfell's content like this this area of land minus the mountains they takes up about this much of the content this gives you a little bit more I'm not gonna lie but the thing that Chapters give, gave us that Orsinium didn't was it gave us a new class and it gave us Battlegrounds. We have the Somerset Isles coming out soon, and the Somerset Isles is adding new content. It's adding a Chapters worth of content, which is going to give us new storyline, a lot more quests than a, a DLC normally does, and it's going to give us a new raid or a new trial. Now. Yes, Orsinium does come with a trial. It comes with a solo man trial, a solo play trial, which is called Melster Marina. And that's good, but at the same time, not as many people can accomplish Orsin uh, the, the Melster Marina trial versus a 12-man trial, because it's a solo play trial. It's a lot more difficult, it's a lot more challenging, because it's one character going in to deal with that whole thing. And it's a really DPS check ready thing, but you also have to be kind of tanky. You kind of have to be this and that. You have to be a mix of everything unless you're a really good player and get every mechanic down to an art form. But it's a really fun thing. And Orsinium itself has a lot of content, like I said. And I think Orsinium was their first iteration of the idea of trap chapters. But I think there was one more that they tried before this, and there was. It was called Craglorn. Craglorn was originally called an Adventure Zone. And it added a lot of content. About as much as a chapter, if not more, in the amount of stuff that you have that's group related. And I think this was their first iteration of adding new content and saying this is what the way we're going to release our content is like this, guys. They wanted to get the player feedback. And they did the same thing with, Ors with, with Orsinium when they released it. They got the player feedback and they realized that people like this a lot more than they liked the Craglorn release. So when they went and made Vardenfell, they wanted to give it a chapter. Like They wanted to make it kind of like an expansion, but not an expansion. Because it's not. An expansion would come with multiple areas of the game. This comes with one landmass. And in fact, some of these land, like the Vardenfell landmass is actually the largest landmass they've released to date, besides the Cyrodiil campaign map. And this is a massive zone that has no instances besides the Delves. 
and going into the Imperial City. But the whole map itself is open. You can travel amongst all of this. And Orsinium to fit in here, Orsinium only would fit in like a section like this. Like this little tiny area here, this is about as big as Orsinium is. It, that gives you an idea of scale. Now when you take Craglorn and you put it into Vardenfell size, they're almost equal. When you put Orsinium into Vardenfell size, it's almost equal. This is supposed to be big, like uh, more... Not it, it's supposed to be about as big as the Vardenfell release, but it's going to encompass a lot more content. It's going to have a lot more landmass to explore. And that's where Somerset Isles is going to separate itself, is it's going to be more to that thing. And it's going to have more, more stuff for us to explore. Now, a lot of people aren't into the whole idea of, like, questing, like, that kind of stuff. Like, people like that, but a lot of people... Once they get to max level, they, they want to focus more towards what they call the end game. And some people enjoy just doing dungeons and trials. But what a lot of people don't realize is that in order to grab an audience of players, you have to have a mix of content. So that's what the DLC releases are. It's, it's a mix of content. They release a couple dungeons to give extra content for us to do. They, they release a, a new open world area. And that's what they did with Clockwork City. They added a new open world area. But Clockwork City, the, the landmass, with the city and everything, is actually equivalent to more of what the Gold Coast is in scale. Because you have this city and you have this city. These aren't instants, though. These are separate cities, but they, they equal the equivalent of what uh, we get with Clockwork City DLC. The Hughes Bane one is a lot smaller, but it has, there's more to the content than what you see. Like you have this massive city, you have this, this massive ruins, you have all this stuff. And this isn't quite as big, but this was the first, first actual DLC, open world DLC they released besides Orsinium. And Orsinium, was, like I said, is massive, it's huge. And it adds a lot of content, over 30 hours of gameplay, of story content. This has 30 hours of story content with this trial. It gives you the, the class, you know. And now we're getting the Sigic Order with this one. We're also getting the um, Jewelry Crafting, which is probably base game. And a lot of these, uh, the, the content they've been releasing, they'll mix in base game content with extra content. Like this right here, the base game content we got was a lot of changes to armor, uh, weapon traits, Mundus stones, that kind of thing. They, they, they did, did a lot of that with Morrowind. They gave us a lot of changes so that that way our, our, you know, we had some base game stuff to change with our characters that really influenced or has influenced the idea of what they're trying to do with the game. So, and a lot of us realized that when they did Vardenfell, it really opened the door to a lot more versatility in our builds or diversity in our builds and stuff and they've really balanced out more since then now it's probably going to take them a little bit longer to get more balancing done between the classes the gear sets all that kind of stuff you know it's going to take time since one tamriel came around but now that we have this they have the structure of the game they have the idea of the game now they know how they want to release content and that's what chapters are. Chapters are just another addition of content in a bigger scale than what we get normally versus DLCs. DLCs are smaller amounts of content like dungeons or just a small area of landmass with some something attached to it that gives us some things like the transmutation system. It's connected to the um, Clockwork City DLC, but you can't have transmutation outside of it unless you get the table that's custom, you know, that you can put into your house or something. But otherwise, there's no other transmutation in the game. You can't go to any town and just transmit. Jewelry crafting, on the other hand, will probably be incorporated into every major city in the game, along with being added to this. Uh, because it would be kind of pointless to have it dedicated to this area alone, because then that means that's where you get all the resources for it and everything else. And making it to where you can get resources for it everywhere in the game would make it would make it more reasonable. 
So, and, and that's speculation, guys, I know, but coming from a, a developer's standpoint, that's what you'd want to do. And that's what I'm saying. Like, from a developer's standpoint, when they started working on, on Elder Scrolls, they didn't have a, they had an idea of what they wanted to do and how they wanted to release content. But they didn't have a definitive way of doing it yet. They have to test ideas with their public. They have to get the, 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 the public's opinion on what they like. The public didn't like the way Craglorn was done. Some people did, some people didn't. Some people liked the group content. But they had to find a good balance with the way that they adjusted the game when they did Orsinium. Orsinium was an open zone. So you could go here at any level, even before One Tamriel. This came out before One Tamriel. And you can go here at any level and play, and there was no repercussions. Like, you could go here level one, even. like Or, like, as soon as you got out of the tutorial, you could go here. And that made a lot of people happy, because it gave them a place where they could go hang out with their friends at any level and play. And they weren't restricted. When they changed one to the world to One Tamriel and did the, the rest of the world like that, it really opened the door for a lot of new stuff. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, this was their first iterational idea of a chapter release. But at the time, they didn't call it a chapter because they hadn't thought of how are we going to make, you know, like get people interested into our, this, how we release big content. They tried the idea first, found out the community liked it, and said, this is what we're going to do with Vardenfell. Boom. This is what we're going to do with the Somerset Isles. Boom. Now, chapters also give us new starting tutorial stories, which is really cool. Um, but the thing is, is that here's the other problem with that, is once they give us a new t starting tutorial, this it's only lasts the until the next chapter comes along. And then we got to do the same thing with this. We've got to adjust to this chapter change. And those who have Morrowind, now, and now by Somerset, now their t starting tutorial is going to be Somerset. But there's a lot of us that have been here since the beginning. So a lot of us played through the original tutorial. Some of us played through the Vardenfell tutorial. Some of us might play through the Somerset tutorial. But most of us are going to be playing Somerset with existing characters that we're going to be able to take there without having to play through the tutorial. So we've already experienced a majority of the story of the game kind of thing. It's a really cool idea of how they've done this. Now, do I agree with this idea of the... Like, Arsenium was the first iteration of the chapter, and now we're going to do this. Yes and no. Yes, because I understand it from a business standpoint and a de game development standpoint. No, I don't agree with it because you're changing the way you do the game. Like, it should still be crowns, like the optional crowns, but the first initial release of it should be cash. Then go, hey guys, we're doing cash now for you guys to pre-order, that kind of thing. But after it launches, we'll make it available for crowns. Then those who want to buy it with crowns can buy it with crowns, and those who want to buy it with cash can do that. That's fine. Like, who want to pre-order can do that. But if they're going to do something like that, they have to do that with every everything, like all the content, not just the chapters. Um, but from a business standpoint, I don't know how their business, like their... Their person that does the um, business, like the, the marketing side and the all that kind of stuff, d wants to do things. Like that's, there's, you got to understand, in a, in a game game company, there's the marketing department, there's the development department, like the, the artist section, there's the game, like the level world designers, then there's the, the game designer, the lead game designer, and then there's game designers for each DLC or chapter that they release. So they have to come up with like different marketing schemes and different things like that to, to kind of draw their players in and get their players to, to purchase things. And so, yeah, I get what they're doing. And like I said, do I agree with all of it? No. Do I like this system? Yes. It works and it does a good job. And I love the sense that they're doing this because it does give those people who don't like something the option to purchase it or not purchase it. Because I know people who haven't even purchased Morrowind yet. 
because they were like, what's the point? I'm just going to get a new class. I'm going to get some new content that I'm not going to really, you know, not that I'm not really interested in. I'm more of an end game player. I want the trials. And yes, it comes with a trial, but I can bypass that trial because I don't really like the sets from there. And they do this with DLCs as well. You have the option to purchase them or not if you're a, if you're a, a, a non-subscriber. But a subscriber can purchase the subscription, gain all access to DLCs, except the chapters. Because they still want that income from those players that'll bring in uh, you know, people from the outside. They still want people to, to come in and buy this content. They still want people to come in and buy certain things because they need that extra burst of income every so often. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, but you need a, a burst of income every so often coming into your business because you need that flow of cash to help pay for things, not just lighting electricity, but to pay your employees, to pay for them to develop new content. And having that burst of, 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 of that flow of income once a year helps do that. And that's why chapters were, are introduced the way they are, is to give that flow of income, that burst of income once a year. And that's why they have a release date for the summertime. Because during the wintertime, they have a greater chance of people buying the game for somebody for Christmas. They have a better, better chance of somebody buying somebody a DLCs for Christmas, for holidays time. In the summertime, a lot of people go on vacations. They go on things like that. They're not interested in buying like a bunch of stuff because they want to save their money to take their family on this great you know, trip to the beach or to go to Disneyland or maybe to go to Europe, go to South America, wherever. They want to go on their vacation for the summer. They want to have money to do that. They don't want to be spending like a whole bunch of money for holiday stuff and then go on a vacation. That's, you know, not a lot of people do that. But some people do go on vacation. They go see family at the holiday times. But this gives them a way to boost their income over the summertime. And and that's that's what marketing does, is they, they look for those things and they look for the best way to do it. And that's why their chapter releases are going to be in the summertime. That's why their DLC releases come every three months, is so that they have a a constant flow of income, not only from the subscribers, but they also have a constant flow from the non-subscribers who are willing to buy the things piecemeal. So, a little bit of business in there, a little bit of information in there, but that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, I can't go into any more detail on how why chapters and, and DLCs are different. I mean, the idea of a DLC normally is something that's going to be small, like a dungeon DLC, or like the, this, like Hughesbane, or Gold Coast, or Clockwork City, those are small DLCs. Chapters are larger DLCs, yes, but they come with a lot more content. They come with a lot more things. You gotta think, uh, these ones are, you know, like Hughes, like Gold Coast, I think they have it set to like 20 hours of quests total. Not even, that includes all the side quests. Now, now, Gold Coast and Thieves Guild is a little different because you have a lot of repeatable quests. But you have that with this as well. You have a lot of repeatable quests that you can do. But when you go to like Vardenfell, you don't have a lot of repeatable quests. There's not a lot of daily repeatable quests. You have your normal daily quests that most places have. But you don't have a lot of repeatable quests. Like, I mean, everyone, every place has its repeatable quests. But my point is, is that this has more questing to it, more story to it, more in-depth stuff to it. And on top of it, most of the time, it's going to come with something a little bit more. Like, yes, Clockwork City came with a, a, a raid, but that was a very small raid compared to, to what Vardenfell's Halls of Fabrication was. Orsinium's raid, the arena, Mel's Arena, is a lot bigger than what came with the, the Clockwork City. And these didn't even come with raids. These didn't even come with a dungeon, just delves. No public dungeons, nothing like that. These come with a lot more content, like I said. They're more re relatable to Orsinium or Craglorn in a, to a degree. Even though I do agree with a lot of people that, that we need more areas like Crag Craglorn added to the game. Because we need more challenging group content in the open world. Um, but we'll have to see what they decide on the next chapter or the next major DLC release kind of thing. Because we have two more DLCs coming out this year. One might be a free DLC and one might be a paid DLC. We'll have to see. 
Like we might get two pay, more paid DLCs. We don't know. We'll have, like I said, we'll have to see what comes after the chapter. But that's pretty much it, guys. That's what we got going on. Uh, that's or that's what what how this works. I know a lot of people don't agree with it, but we 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 can't make the decisions for the company. We can complain, but that's about it. But it's not going to change the the company's decision. The only way that we can do that is change the company's decision is quit playing the game. But then the game would get shut down. Because they wouldn't have any income coming in. The only other thing we can do to influence them is to not buy the chapter. And be like, no, we're not paying this price for the chapter. We want it available for crowns. That might change their mind. But you can't change... 2.5 million people's minds or 10 million people's minds or a million people's minds with one voice it takes everyone in the community to work together to get that change and not everyone's gonna gonna make that change that's why I said yes I I disagree with the choices but I like how it's being done is I do like how it's being done I don't agree with it but I like it it works Well, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I hope you guys liked it. If you guys did, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can hit that subscribe button. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy, Mike, see you in game. Bye.